right, welcome back. We were talking last segment about how developers stack the deck against their own customers and clients, homeowners. We we started by explaining the current situation we have in Blaylock Lakes in a second home environment in Coweta County, about an hour south of the city, where we innocently bought a lot in that community. It used mm -hmm. to be developed was developed by cousins originally. And the people associated with that development, some of them anyway, uh, bought it from Cousins when they shut down their residential development arm. And they made a prospectus of what they thought they could do with it. And according to their own words, it just hasn't performed the way they want. So a couple of years ago, right around the time we were purchasing a lot, they failed to disclose to us they were in the process of putting this land into a conservation easement. And these conservation easements are kind of a 21st century abusive tax shelter that's raping you, the American taxpayer, of your rights and the money that's due. And it's also raping the county because the county discount on the land that we're talking about, it's 1,200 acres, is, um, is $15,000 a year in savings. And so there's $15,000 per year not being paid in taxes on this property because it's in a conservation easement. And they represent in their marketing that this is part of the value proposition of the community, 3,000 acres, 30 trails. And by, by God, this is one of the most beautiful properties I've I ever mean, seen in my life. I mean, just to bring it back to the city, it's basically like buying in a condo building and they're telling you, well, at first, when you purchase your property here, you could use the pool and the workout room, but we've sold it to somebody else. We put it in an, in an easement to somebody else, a conservation and easement. And so now you may not be able to use it. Now you have to join as a member or if the person who bought it, but you uh, already paid for it, right? But, but this is what developers <laughs> are doing all across Atlanta. So this is this, this scam, if you will, is going on all across. But they Atlanta. already sold it to you. They're going to sell it to you again. They're renegotiating well, well, the contract they already have with they've you. They've sold you on the rights to it. Okay. So the, the problem is, can they sell it? The technical answer is yes, they can sell. If you're buying in an existing development where the developer has not turned it over to the homeowners association, they can they do can, whatever they, they want. They can sell out whatever they can imagine and really screw you right in the middle. And I've seen it happen over and over and over again. Can what, they tell you they're going to build a pool and not build a pool? Absolutely. Really? You change at any point. But here's the problem. I didn't know They that. can tell you, well, we've put it in a conservation easement. Are we going to put it in a conservation easement? It'll never be developed. That's a, that's not a lie. What? In, it's like an irrevocable tr or a revocable trust, actually. You it's can like revoke a trust. It back. Yeah, it's you like can a revocable trust. put it right back. There's a whole Georgia law and statute that says I can, I can take a... These people pay $2 million for this 1,200 acres from Cousins Properties. Uh, they decided not to put the 100 lots on it that it could have held. So they likely went and got an appraiser. And I don't know this, but this is how it goes in general. They likely went and got an appraisal for what the property is worth as a developable piece of land. I don't know what that is, but let's call it 5 to $7 million. Because as a raw piece of land, it was worth $2 million in 2015. And a year or two later, they put it in a conservation trust. Unless I would just pluck a number out of the air. I have no idea. $5 million. Well, if the people in the LLC that are selling or that are giving the land to the conservation easement are at a 35% collective tax bracket, that's like, what is that? $1.7 million in tax deductions. That, not tax deductions. In taxes over three years, they don't have to pay. But they're selling it to a buyer also, right? Well, now they're selling it to a buyer. They're selling just the package. Like here, we put it in a little nice little conservation package and we're selling the you package. You can build one house on it. Well, who's going to build one house nowhere, on a million acres? Nowhere near the lake, which is <laughs> nuts. Who's going to do that, right? So the question is, and then there's this How big is the house? There's this law in the state of Georgia. And if I have... I think you can put a silo on there. Well, there's all these things you can do, but then there's a clause in the easement. This is a perpetual easement. It'll never be built on. It's it's great. It'll keep the nature intact, right, as they get their million-dollar tax deduction or whatever it is. And then it says, oh, well, extinguishment or termination. So you just pay if a fine, right? If circumstances arise in the future. You pay a late fee or something, right? <laughs> I talked right? to Coweta County. I talked to the assessor's office of Coweta County, and I said, listen. How often are you seeing conservation easements being converted into developments, not just converted into not conservation easements? And they said in the history of the county, we have never seen a period of time in Coweta County where as many conservation easements of the past are being converted back into developments as there are now. So There's a bingo. lot of land out there. So here you have a developer who isn't doing for its investors what they've promised. They create this massive tax scam. It's not illegal, but to me, it's a scam. It's, it's, it's legal fraud. 
and they're passing all these tax savings on to their to their investors, which I guess if it's legal, it's legal. Go for it. Knock yourself out. I'd do it too. OK, but I wouldn't sell people up the river. I'd have to sleep at night knowing that I've put out countless thousands of documents representing that everybody who buys in here gets to use this land. Then they hide the documents when you ask for them or even worse, they don't. You find out the document exists and you say, I want a copy of it. And they refuse to give it to you because the minute you get it, you're going to figure out you're going to know what happened, how to stop them. Right. And so then what happens is, is they start getting nasty. So this letter goes out, which I would call outright slander from one of the developers, which is one of the reasons I filed a lawsuit against them, saying that I'm basically lying. I'm making stuff up and I'm being vulgar. Did you cuss at them? Well, an F-bomb once to one person. But the guy that wrote the letter, I never cussed at him. I mean, this makes me mad. I bought in good faith in a neighborhood. I investigated all the documents. And so the answer to this is, that so if you own in a situation in an HOA anywhere in Metro Atlanta or beyond, you can't trust that the documents you're being given as represented by the developer or any sales agent, especially the real estate scam agents of the business, you can't trust that those documents fully represent what you're buying into. You have to get a lawyer. And I think this will be the best investment you'll ever make because then at least you've got somebody who was supposed to dig and find it and do something beyond a title search. You've got to go and get a lawyer. You need like a PI or something. You I kind mean, of do need a background PI. Background check. Wow. If, if not for a lawyer, a very helpful person at Coweta County and one other person will go name, unnamed uh, or unidentified. I would have never found these documents because it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, the you book, need like the code to the safe, right? Well, I'm looking at the document. So had I found the recorded easement, it doesn't reference the contract of the easement. There is no reference in the Coweta County easement of what I'm talking about of the actual document that's instructive of this thing's 30 pages. There's I had to call the the, the land trust and asked them to send it to me. And I found out that somebody who is seemingly really is right here in the document. And it's like, it was like jaw dropping. It's like finding a dead body or a skeleton you've been looking for for years. So their marketing says that you can use this section, right? We sign a contract that does or does not state that we can use the section. Well, the marketing, the the marketing indicates that the section is available to be used. Okay, so, but then when we closed and we signed, mm-hmm. what did it did it say that you are going to have the access to these amenities as part of being part of the homeowners association? Well, listen, did it say it or not? No, and yes, and maybe. I mean, the question is, is 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 what was the representation? It was delusion. And let me read you the Georgia. So stat- does that go back to the listing agent? Absolutely. The listi- and her brokerage. Because we know the listing agent knew what we are now describing on the and radio. What if she says she doesn't know? Well, you start looking, you subpoena emails and documents, which means in order to co- clean what this up. What if she really didn't know? Well, that's not her fault, but she does know. She, she did know. Now. She did know. She yeah. did know because she made a comment to me after we bought the lot that now makes sense that didn't make any sense at that point. It was vague. The other thing is, is you'll find sometimes you ask for documents, they shoot you over a PDF. I asked them for a copy of all the documents that are associated with this property that a homeowner could possibly want to know. And they sent me over the exact same documents I got two years ago with no copy of or mention of the easement that has a substantial, it's it's substantial impact. The lack of telling somebody something that you know is recorded, that you've been associated with for the sake of covering it up is under the Georgia statute of frauds. Whether you do it on purpose to misrepresent the status or you do it through gross negligence, nonetheless, the statute of frauds in Georgia says it's fraud. So if you know you're doing something and you know your intentions and you know it could have an adverse effect on the ownership or value of a piece of property, and in Georgia, you fail to disclose it, piece of property, a condo, piece of land, a neighborhood, it doesn't matter, that's fraud. It's, it's fraud. It's material non-disclosure. Now, when we're talking about a house, it's buyer beware. When we're talking about land, it's buyer beware. But we're not talking about what a seller knows or not doesn't know. We're saying what a seller knows that they should have said. So the, 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 the legal failure standard, to disclose the, the, the failure to disclose what you know by withholding or by deception is the fraud. You don't have to disclose what you don't know, right? You don't have to say I have a foundation problem on my home when you don't know there's a foundation problem. But if I buy your home 
And I discovered, because I call up Joe, Joe Bubba's contracting service, he said, yeah, I came out here to the last seller and I told him this thing was falling in the ground and told him they need to fix it. And I just bought the home and they didn't tell me that. Joe Bubba's in trouble. Well, Joe Bubba's not in trouble. Joe Bubba has just uh, in- introduced himself to Fulton County or Coweta Court as a witness that Mr. Home Seller defrauded me by material non-disclosure. I mean, that's how it works. And so when you look at all this stuff, Mackenzie, you know, this, this thing just keeps building. But this is an example of where we have become really good in this country uh, at, at exporting and conducting in corruption. A lot of loopholes. Loopholes, I mean, are... I, borderline illegal border, border I have like never, on the edge I have seen so many things in 2018 from larger businesses that are egregious that are damning that are immoral just the the payoffs and the pay unders and the I, I mean I don't we can't even talk about some of the stuff that we're investigating right now and some of the properties we own a lot of properties so it may sound like everything we've got's got a well, problem th- because but, something happens like this and you wake up and you're like wow this is not the only HOA that we're in the problem is that most homeowners or property owners in these types Who of arrangements know don't know to ask any of it and I'm the kind of person that keeps asking and keeps asking and the more they resist to answer the more I press so here's my action point for our audience on on this. I want to get to some positive financial stuff in the next half hour uh, about what to do with your money and how to best manage it for what's happening in the stock market and the housing market right now. You've got to get a lawyer to investigate anything you buy in an HOA because by and large, whether it's legal or not, because the law has become crooked, our government is crooked. These HOAs are crooked as hell. And unless you investigate and dig and dig and dig and go and go and go, the developer, if still anywhere involved, and sometimes you don't think they are, they still are. We got one of those right now. They will screw you and get every so greedy penny out of you they can. We'll be right back. 